All right, so next let's look at the adrenal gland. Okay, so remember the adrenal gland is a pyramid shaped gland that sits just superior to the kidneys. It has its own blood supply. So it has an adrenal artery and an adrenal vein. The adrenal artery is going to send, you know, nutrients and uh, oxygen and the adrenal vein, the adrenal vein is going to help us with draining hormones. Okay. Those are things you kind of want to think about. Okay. So remember the adrenal gland has two areas, the outermost area. Uh, sorry, I was, tr I was trying to think about whether or not that was actually the outermost area, but it is, is the adrenal cortex. Okay. This is our adrenal cortex. The adrenal cortex makes a series of hormones. The adrenal medulla is this middle portion here. Again, it makes it a, a series of hormones. And let me just kind of, I don't know, move myself over to that corner for a minute. So I can write that out. So let's go over the adrenal cortex first, okay? So the adrenal cortex makes three types of hormones. The first type of hormones are androgens. Androgens basically are precursors to sex hormones. So you create these androgens and then you transform them into testosterone and estrogen. Testosterone and estrogen target a number of different cells. In this case, these are some of the first uh, sex hormones that are produced during puberty to help get through puberty and actually start the whole reproductive process, okay? That's kind of all I really want you to know about androgens is they help produce sex hormones, testosterone and estrogen in every single person. How are they being released? What's their stimulus? What's their targets and effects? Let's just leave it at that, okay? The other more important ones are ones that are are going to be used for long long term long term stress, excuse me. And really what I should tell you is that yes, you you're going to secrete these hormones every day in a certain amount. That's the whole point of a negative feedback mechanism. You have a certain level of testosterone and estrogen you need on a daily level. If it's too high, you turn it off. If it's too low, you turn it you turn it on. Okay. The same thing with most hormones in your body. You have to have a specific level of them. It's just that under periods of long-term stress, you might actually secrete more of these. Okay. So one of these hormones is cortisol. And let's just go through our whole entire thing. So what we're going to see is that we're going to have either stress, but really stress is going to cause um, ACTH to be released from the anterior pituitary gland. Uh, I have to go all the way back, don't I? So we're gonna have a releasing hormone from the hypothalamus. That's gonna target our anterior pituitary gland to release ACTH, okay? Uh, let me redo this. So we have hypothalamus, A releasing hormone, uh, it's killing me. And then anterior pituitary gland and ACTH, okay? So ACTH is going to target our adrenal cortex. And when it does, we're gonna secrete cortisol. And cortisol is gonna have a number of targets and effects. So one, is it's going to target any cell that might be storing fats or proteins. And when it does, it tells those cells to break those fats and proteins into sugar.
Okay. When those sugars get released into the bloodstream, a secondary effect is to increase blood sugar. Okay. Because essentially you want your cells to have enough energy. So it's going to help essentially with energy production in cells. It's going to help us give enough food to our cells to make energy. Right, we said under periods of long-term stress, think about how much your neurons have to work because you're stressed out. They're gonna need a lot of sugar to make a lot of energy so they can go back to rest. The other hormone that ACTH is gonna cause to be released is aldosterone. Now, you're going to learn later, aldosterone has multiple, multiple uh, stimuli. One is hormonal. One is ACTH. Okay. Basically, ACTH is going to be released on a consistent basis, and aldosterone gets released on a consistent basis. And then you have other stimuli that causes aldosterone levels to increase or decrease. But essentially, what aldosterone is going to do is it targets the kidneys. Okay, at the kidneys, what's going to happen is the kidneys reabsorb sodium. So they're going to take sodium out of urine and add it to blood. Because of how the body works, water follows. I was going to say, I was going to write flows, but no, water follows. Okay, so it follows salt. And a secondary effect is that you actually increase blood volume and you increase blood pressure. Okay, so one of the other stimuli is going to be when blood volume or blood pressure go down. This is one way you regulate blood, blood volume and blood pressure. Okay, it'll also secrete potassium into urine. Basically, let me rewrite that. We're going to put potassium in urine. Okay. It's a, again, it's another like kind of secondary effect. It has to do with the fact that whenever you move, a lot of times when you move sodium, you move potassium in the opposite way. Remember the sodium potassium pump. If you move sodium in one direction, usually potassium moves in the opposite direction. Okay, so that's what's going to happen over long, over periods of long-term stress. Think about this to help you with blood pressure, right? In periods of stress, your blood pressure is going to probably be high. You need to have blood flowing and circulating through all your body cells, and then that blood that's flowing to all your body cells, you want to you want to be able to supply nutrients and oxygen to them so they can continue to work. And basically, overwork. Ah, oh, perfect, right there, okay. So the second one is gonna be the adrenal medulla, okay? The adrenal medulla is going to secrete two hormones and those hormones are used during times of short-term stress. What we're gonna see is that there's gonna be a, neuro, uh, uh, a nerve that actually innervates the adrenal medulla. Two nerves, this is the greater and the lesser splanchnic nerve. Okay, so we're going to go through this whole thing again. Okay, so we're going to say short-term stress. So unlike the hormones of long-term stress that are always kind of secreted a little bit because they, they help maintain certain things in the body on a daily basis, short-term stress hormones are only released if you have stress. So what ends up happening is you're going to have a message from the hypothalamus, essentially a stress message. So the hypothalamus is actually going to send an action potential down those two nerves.
And essentially that targets the adrenal medulla. Okay, the adrenal medulla is gonna make two hormones, but we're just gonna know one thing, okay? Because these two hormones have the, the same, tar they don't have the exact same targets, but they, they kind of have the same effects. Actually, that's not true either, but for your class, yes, they're gonna have the same targets and the same effects, okay? This is epinephrine and norepinephrine. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna try to write out epinephrine and norepinephrine. They're also called adrenaline and noradrenaline. And what do they target? Okay, they're gonna target the heart. And at the heart, you're gonna increase heart rate. Basically your heart's gonna pound more, okay? And as a secondary effect, you're gonna increase blood pressure, right? As heart rate goes up, blood pressure goes up. You're gonna target blood vessels. Certain blood vessels are gonna vasoconstrict and some are gonna vasodilate. And this has to do with whether or not epinephrine or norepinephrine is being used, okay? But essentially what's gonna happen is like at the muscles, you're going to vasodilate. So you get bigger. At digestive organs and skin, you're gonna vasoconstrict. You're gonna get smaller. Basically, you're gonna change blood flow patterns. So more blood is gonna flow to the areas where it might help you in periods of long-term stress, where you're gonna use your muscles to run away, or you're gonna and you're gonna divert blood away from other places where we don't want it to go, like in terms of digestion. You should also increase the size of the bronchioles. So again, your bronchioles are gonna be bigger. So essentially that you can increase respiratory rate. Like, so air can flow in so that you have more air so you can create more energy, okay? And I do believe this also, they also help you with increasing sugar levels as well. So again, you might start breaking down glycogen or maybe you start breaking down fats and proteins to help make sure blood sugar levels increase. But I don't want you to think that this increases blood sugar levels. You, you want to think about like targeting body cells to make sugar. Okay, that's the way you have to think about it because there's other hormones that do blood sugar and you don't wanna get it all mixed and discombobulated. Okay, those are the adrenal glands.